Continuing with uh, investigating this new operation, the prefix star, the star operator on forms, we want to go to R4 and then uh, Rn. But we mainly do a lot of stuff in R4 for the next couple of next few videos. Um, so we need to get away from like PQ and R, especially when we get to Rn. So the notation we'll have is just if, if I have a alpha as a one form, it's some function times dx1 plus some function times dx2, etc. We'll just call those alpha sub 1, alpha 2, alpha sub n. Um, notice that I had been kind of, uh, just because it's easier to type fast, I've been using subscripts, the subscript notation for partial derivatives. I'm not going gonna to stop that because uh, I don't want to confuse that with, with this kind of use of subscripts. So from now on, these are, uh, the subscripts of these guys are always just going to say, this is the first component of alpha, the second, etc. When we get to two forms, We've got dx1 was dx2, or dx2 was dx3, etc. Um, and so I'm going to say beta1, 2, for example, is what's in front of dx1 was dx2, etc. Um, remember, in R3, we had this trick of writing things in cyclic order, and that tended to cut down on the minus signs. There was nothing necessary about that, nothing magic about it. It just happens to cut down on the magic on the, the minus signs. Here, in Rn, there's, it's not really that useful to try to do that, so increasing order is probably a good way. Although in the next problem set, we're going to do R4 in a, in a kind of a special way, and then turns out that the cyclic order might might be useful in some cases. Um, and then similarly, it's like a three form, gamma one two three is in front of dx one, which dx two, which dx three, etc. Okay, so now we're going to do the star operator in R4. Okay, so wh what was the coolest thing about the star? The coolest thing about the star was this that alpha wedge star beta is just the dot product of alpha and beta defined in a very simple natural way um, times the volume form dv and that's what we want to emulate okay and we want to see if we can figure out and come up with a star uh, in that way okay so um, what's the dot product going to be well dot product of two functions is just you multiply the functions just like two numbers just multiplying dot product of two one forms just exactly what you expect pair up all the components and add same deal with all the other ones. Top product of two two forms, you just pair up all the corresponding components and add. Same for three forms. There's only four of, of these guys, if you think about it. And then for uh, four forms in R4, uh, there's only one one uh, coefficient. It's epsilon 1, 2, 3, 4, or theta 1, 2, 3, 4. And you just multiply them. So notice how it all, this always works, that the middle dimension is the most complicated. These guys have the same amount of information, four components. These guys have the same amount of information, one component. OK. Um, it can be useful to think about taking the dot product of two forms of different degrees. Uh, but you know what? It's not useful in an interesting way. We just always make sure it's 0. Um, it's never a good idea. I've never seen it be a good idea to uh, make that non-0. Maybe sometimes. OK. So notice that these guys, this guy makes most sense if they're in the same degree. OK. If you've done a little linear algebra, Basically, what we're saying is all these basis one forms, like dx1 or dx1 wedge dx2, in any particular degree, they're all just defined to be orthonormal. And this, these formulas fall out of that. OK. So here's what we want to have. We want to replicate this. And we want to come up with star in such a way that it automatically makes this true. And there's pretty much only one way to do that. OK. dv, of course, is now an abbreviation for dx1 wedge through dx4. That's the four-dimensional volume form. One of my students asked, do you still get to call it V and talk about volume in four dimensions? Absolutely. Volume is just the it's the n-dimensional word, word. You could always call it four volume if you want, but that gets tedious. Okay. Um, okay. So one th a good way to check that right right off the bat is a form wedged with the star of itself should be alpha dot itself dV, and we could go ahead and come up with a, a new very obvious notation, which is oh hey when we dot something with itself that's supposed to be the square of the magnitude. And so that basically tells us what we mean by the magnitude of a one form. Like the magnitude of alpha would just be the square root of alpha 1 squared plus alpha 2 squared plus alpha 3 squared plus alpha 4 squared. Just what you'd expect. OK. So uh, let's go ahead and define things like star dx1. OK. I need something so that dx1 wedge with what I'm about to write down gives me just exactly the volume form. OK. So that's just going to be the rest of them dx2 wedge dx3 wedge dx4. And is it in the right order? Yes, because dx1 put in on the left-hand side of this will be the volume form in the right order. OK. Star dx2 
is going to be, well, I'm just going to put in the rest of them, and then I'll figure out the sign. And I'm going to put them in the increasing order, dx1, wedge dx2, wedge dx4. Nope, dx3, wedge dx4, sorry. OK, is this going to be in the right order? If I put in a dx2 in front of this, I'm going to get dx2, ooh, the 1 and the 2 are going to have to switch. So I need to put a minus sign to correct for that switch. OK. So it's always going to be plus or minus just the rest of the dx's. That's basically the, the idea. And then we'll, you want to think as, as we go through this, or you should stop and figure it out yourself right now and pause the video, what is a good way to describe the rule for what the sign is? OK, so this is going to be dx1, wedge dx2, wedge dx4, plus or minus. Well, if I put in a dx3 in front of that, Okay, I'm gonna actually write it out. Okay, this is supposed to be the 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 equivalent to one two three four. Well, yeah, if I have, I have two switches, so I don't need a minus sign. So I'm just gonna drop this back out, and say, aha, it's gonna be plus. Okay, and then star dx four is gonna be. Let me copy and paste here. Uh, I just need to change that to a three. That's gonna need a minus sign. Because if I put a dx4 in front, I need to switch it through three things. OK, so 2 pluses, 2 minuses is pretty reasonable. And notice what's happening is I'm just counting switches. I'm just writing this out, and then I need to figure out how many switches would I need to get it all in order if I put the, the original thing that I'm taking the star of in front of it. OK, so similarly, I'm not going to do them all out. Let's just maybe do a couple of these. Star dx1 to dx2, I need to have something that will wedge with this to be all of them put together. It has to be all the rest of them. That's dx with 3dx4 here. Here, I don't need a minus sign, because if I put in the dx1 to wedge dx2 in front, it's already in the right order. But for example, if I had, let me just copy and paste and change the letter, change the numbers. If I had uh, star dx1 wedge dx3, it's going to be dx2 wedge dx4. Let's see. If I put this in front of here, the 1's in the right place, but the 3 and 2 are switched, so I'm going to need a minus sign. Okay, And then I'll just say etc. So the rule is it's all the rest of the dx's, the basis 1 forms, and you put in uh, a minus sign if there's an odd number of switches to make it the right order when you put the thing being starred in front and the, the star in uh, second. Okay. Um, one more, let's say star of a 3 form. That's going to be a 1 form. And let us it's going to be dx4, plus or minus. That's definitely going to be a plus, because it's already in the right order. When you put this in front of this, it will be in the right order. And then the other ones will be plus or minus, depending on, on the whether this is odd or even, basically. And then star dv, it's pretty easy to see that that's equal to 1. OK. So um, we've got a lot of. Um, if you if you had a general alpha and a general beta, we'd get a kind of a messy thing with a bunch of summations or a sum of a bunch of terms. But it really does work that this this actually gives you alpha dot beta dv. We can just check here. In a special case, what if we just have a a two form with only two components and a two another two form with only two components? Okay. Well, this guy, let's not mess with that yet. Um, let me just give him a little more room. Yeah. OK, and then the star of this guy is going to be a, and then let's see, dx1 was dx3. Ah, that was minus of um, dx2 was dx4. And then b, dx2 was dx4. Let's see if we can do that from scratch. It's going to be dx1 was dx3, but is it going to need a plus or a minus? Um, so we think of the 2, 4 in front of the 1, 3. Let's see. Let's actually do that as a little scratch thing. If we have dx2 as dx4, it's helpful to actually see it written out. Which is dx1 as dx3. Is that equivalent to the volume form or minus volume form? So I have to switch the 1 past 2 things. And then it's 1, 2, 4, 3. And then one more switch. That's 3 switches. And so we need a minus sign. OK. Is this going to work? Well, it's going to be minus PA times dx1 wedge dx3 wedge dx2 wedge dx4. 
and then minus QB. So you might be worried, hey, I don't think I'm supposed to get minus signs here. But let's bear with us here. Wedge, dx1, wedge dx3. Remember, I'm, I have to put these in the right order. So 1, 3, 2, 4, ah, the 3 and the 2 are out of order. Aha, so that's just going to be, become a plus. And here, 2, 4, 1, 3, again, the 1 has to switch with two of these guys, the 3 has to switch um, then with the 4 that shows up in the end. And so we're going to get a minus sign. We're good. Okay. So it's basically that it, since it works for these elementary ones, the basis ones, and it's bilinear, it just distributes. The, the, the wedge product is distributive. It can't fail to work for a general, um, a general 2 form or general P form in general. Okay. So um, that's an introduction to the star, at least in four dimensions. Um, you might think, what does this do for us? Um, but it turns out that the star for forms, it's really, it's really fundamental that it has this property. The dot product, if you just remember about the dot product, it is the source of all things geometric. It is the source of lengths, angles, magnitudes, um, rotations, everything to do with geometry really is encoded by the dot product. And forms need that information a lot of the time. Um, if you just look at wedge and D, they have this wonderful naturality property. Um, so let me just let me just note this. I'll just kind of insert it here. Um, we know that D and the wedge product are completely natural. They work the same even under like some radical kind of deformation. When we look at um, reparameterizing spaces and things like that, the D and the wedge don't even notice that you've stretched and sheared things. That's kind of weird from a geometric perspective. It says that the wedge and D alone can't possibly encode any kind of real geometry. They are really topological uh, gadgets. They can be stretched at, at will pretty much as long as things are smooth, differentiable. And so we need some other operation to encode the dot product. And it turns out that the star is the way that that really most naturally comes into a lot of the calculations. You can encode it this way, but it turns out the star is something that's this, uh, the key thing that comes in most of the time when you're, when you're really doing geometry uh, of, with forms. Okay, so we'll continue this on another video.